and welcome. And it is our invitation to you to experience the Jazz Zone. Brought to you by Mountain Castle Music. Our mission statement in the zone is to recognize the great performance and performers, both past and present. Those who have paved the way to express and showcase the talents of the artists nationally and internationally. To these special people of the past, we pay respect and remember. Today, we're involved in the great artistry of Mr. Clarence C.J. Johnston. And with him, we are so proud to have on bass, Mr. Bobby Haynes, a veteran in jazz. And a young moving star, moving those fingers across the keyboard, Mr. Robert Turner. And now, the artistry of Mr. Clarence C.J. Johnston. I thought about you.
Brother Clarence C.J. Johnston. That was an absolutely awesome set. And at this time, I want to just take some few minutes and ask you some questions and kind of go into the past. I know you're an absolutely fantastic drummer. And just kind of let me know how you ended up into uh, being a musician in the first place. Let's start from there. Well, uh, <clears throat> to start from there, it was a... Uh, really very funny how it started. Uh, I'd been in the service and then too, I'd played a little bit before I went in, but when I came out, uh, you know, like you come out and you hang around and yeah. you hang with your fellas for a while. And then that, well, all of a sudden out of clear blue sky, man, Roy Haynes just decided to come by my house. Cause he, uh, he'd been on the road and he heard I was home. So he come by and he stopped it and he said, hey man, listen, you know, you and I used to be at camp together. And said, you know, you always had good rhythm. Why don't you get into drums, man? Right. So I said, drums? He said, yeah. I said, well, I hadn't even thought about it. So he showed me one lick, and that one lick fascinated me for some reason or other. All right. And uh, as of today, I still play that same lick. All right, <laughs> all right. But uh, that's how I really started, the through Roy Haynes. Fantastic. Yeah, and then into Alan Dawson. Alan Dawson took me under his wing and started showing me some things. And it's uh, just been with you ever since yeah ever okay. since ever since and then so you, you haven't been misbehaving or anything like that because i know that you were involved with the play ain't misbehaving yes I was, yeah. yeah that was what a fast, fantastic show that was share yeah. some experience with that uh well uh they asked me to play the show and it went to alaska mm. and we got to Alaska, the temperature was like, a little chilly, huh? <laughs> the temperature was frightfully cold. Because we went up there uh, in, uh, like in September. Yes. So uh, we were up there for exactly five and a half months. And we played the show six nights a week and uh, two shows a night. And a very good buddy of mine was on the show with me, named Alan Doss. I mean, Alan Jackson. He was a you know, bass player. Mm -hmm. Him and I used to hang out together a lot. And he was the one that sort of let the man know that I could play the show. So we played the show. And plus, the fellas in the band, I knew them also. And uh, we had a nice time playing out there, believe it or not. And we ended up uh, doing after hour shows. Okay. Yeah. In the last. It's a jazz group, you know, we were right. playing after hour right. shows. Well, that sounds like it. And then you kind of, I don't know if this is chronologically correct, but I heard something about the Dirty Dozen as well. Can you share some light on that? Oh, yeah. Well, through Fat Brit and Wilbur Brown, they approached me one day. I was, I was at a park playing, and they asked me would I uh, join their group. As a, and I said, what group? And they said, the Dirty Dozen. <laughs> I said, okay. Yeah. All right, I said that sounds good. I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll come down and I'll, uh, I'll sit in with you and see what happens. So I sat in, and the next thing I knew, I was working with them. Jazz group. How long uh, did you play with the Dirty Dozen? Oh, uh, I was with them for about a year and a half. Yes. Yeah, but Dirty Dozen. And, and uh, all I can say about that, in a sense, was Wilbur Brown is one of the most fantastic saxophone players I've ever played with. Mm -hmm. He's very versatile fellow with a saxophone. So you right. seemed like he never. Never ran out of ideas. He's always he could always make steps going. You know, it was fun playing with them. So you've had varied experience in terms of working with many great musicians. And as we go on, I know you work with the great lady Gloria Lynn as well. Yes, I did. Yes. Yeah. Share some of that experience. Oh, too. It, well, that was a beautiful experience. Uh, as for a singer, I uh, as for a jazz singer particularly. She was one of the very best, one of the very, very best. And plus, she was quite a lady, too. But as for a singer, she, she really kept us busy. We hardly had any time off at all. She's constantly worked. We worked seven on seven. Wow. You know, yes. and uh, yeah, seven on seven. And uh, we went all over this country. We never went to Europe with her, but we went, worked all the main cities in this country with her. All over the United States. All over the United mm -hmm. States. Mm -hmm. And the last place I worked with her, I, as I can recall, it was in Las Vegas. That was the la ending of it. That was the end of our tour with her. Uh -huh. And uh, she didn't like the idea, but she wanted to do a recording day with us. And uh, uh, I don't know what happened with that. Uh -huh. We never did get around to that. 
just keep moving on. But I, you as, know, to, as the career kept unfolding. Yeah. I, you know, I wanted to ask you about another, you know, great uh, young lady that was singing, Lorez Alexander. Lorez Alexander. Yes. Sir. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's another great singer. share. Share. Yeah, share, share with us. Yeah. She's yeah. A, well, she had something that I don't think many many singers had. She had a, a complete command of her voice. Mm. She could do a lot of things with her voice and. Uh, she knew how to, you know, portray herself to the audience. And playing behind her was always very subtle. It was always, you know, we always felt comfortable with her. She never made you feel uncomfortable. You always felt comfortable with her. And uh, she admired good musicians. And we just come on and do our job, played for her well. And then she was completely satisfied. She was always satisfied with us. It was you know, Gilda Mahonis, Alan Jackson, and myself. And uh, she kept that trio with her for about nine years. We were with her. Wow. Straight. You know, straight nine years we were with Perez. Wow, that's, that's pretty long yeah. combination yeah. for 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 uh, And that was uh, musical. alternating between her and Ernie Andrews. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, as I was saying, you were playing with a lot of the greats. A lot of the greats were playing with the great as well. Right. Yeah, yourself. I know you're a fantastic drummer. I, I've just uh, admired your career myself. Also, you played with James Spaulding for... Uh, for a little uh, while? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, I had a couple of, uh, like, couple of club dates with him. Mm -hmm. Then uh, he called me up one day and said, listen, I got a recording day. You feel like making it? And I said, and why not? Yes. <laughs> you know? Yes. So he said, okay, come on. So we, we went on and made the recording date. Mm -hmm. And it was like, uh, I said, anything in particular? He said, just play. <laughs> <laughs> just do the Clarence C.J. Johnson just, thing. Just huh? play. Yes, sir. Yes, so sir. We just sat down and we started playing. Yes, sir. And it came out. Came out good. Have you done a lot of recordings? Quite a few. Yes. Quite a few. Yeah. I know that you I can't even, I don't think I can remember everybody I've recorded with. Yes. I've done so many of them. Well, having a fantastic career. I know as we started the interview, we showed a, a really nice shot of you on drums. And as we move through this, I, I noticed on our first set, and hopefully on our uh, second part of this, we can get some treatment of those brushes. I, I know. Tell us a little bit about utilizing the 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 brushes in your. Artistry, you know, because you it's it's like watching I don't want to use another artist's name like Picasso, but it's it's like watching some master do his thing and I know you teach a lot as well. Yeah. Share, share about that. Uh well brushes. Uh, well it's, it's a funny thing. You fellas nowadays, drummers nowadays, they hardly touch brushes. It's uh, I don't think it's whatever they're playing in the groups they play with. I don't think it calls too much for brushes, but coming along in the 60s and 70s into the 80s, you had to use brushes. That was definite. Well, particularly in jazz. Jazz field and blues field, you had to use brushes. And there was a few artists around that I admired playing brushes. For instance, like Papa Joe Jones was one. Tilly Joe was another. And uh, Art Blakely was another one. And among a few others, I can't recall at the moment, but brushes, that's one of your difficult, uh, uh, you know, to play them. Mm -hmm. You have to be really in consistency with them mm -hmm. because they flap on you. <laughs> they don't, okay. you know, okay. they're not like a drumstick, you know, they're... So it's quite an art form. Quite an art form yes. to play with brushes. So, you know, as, as you were speaking of that, you know, I just wanted to bring in the aspect of an icon in jazz, and that's Mr. Sonny Stitt. Share some of that relationship. Oh, Sonny Stitt. And yeah. I mean, we don't have a long time, but I, I just want you, ooh, he's an icon. Yes, he is. Strong. Uh, you're talking about a strong, strong a man of, 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 of his music. It was Sonny Stitt. He was very strong. And what he wanted to play, he would play it without any gesture or preparedness. Or any, he just went on and played what he wanted to play. And, uh, oh, and uh, when, he, when he played, he played with such a beat, it was impossible for you to get lost with him. Mm. 
it was impossible. If you got large, you, you just couldn't play. Yeah. <laughs> you just couldn't play. Yeah. yeah. Say, if that was it, that was it, huh? Right then. Yeah. Led you well. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, having the opportunity to speak with you and watch you work has been fantastic. Because the names that you have brought up, you are a master with the artistry of jazz and definitely with the drums. Thank you so much. Thank you. Man. Yeah. So we're going to get into another part of Mr. Clarence C.J. Johnston. Thank you. My friend. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. So we're going we're gonna to go right into exactly what we do. All blues. All blues. All right. All right. Set it. 